something to be iconic, it has to be more than just amazing or impressive or important. More than anything, it needs to be remembered. In the case of Rocket League goals, these are the ones that people kept talking about long after they happened. They were either important enough or they impacted the game enough that they've had a lasting impact on the community. In this list, I'm sticking with goals that have happened in the competitive scene, either in RLCS or show matches or other tournaments. Also, because I've talked about many of these games and many of these goals before, I'm not going to give a whole history of each play. If you want, you can check out my other top 10s for that kind of content. I'm mainly going to focus on the shots themselves and why they shaped Rocket League as an esport. Alright, before we get into the list, I wanted to mention that this video is sponsored by Gamerlink. I know a lot of you have heard me talk about Gamerlink before. I'm actually really proud to be sponsored by them because they have a really amazing community. And they've been amazing to me. Gamerlink is basically an app for gamers who are looking for other gamers to either play with or trade with. It's basically a community hub and it has a really simple system. You basically send out a beacon or look at beacons that have been sent out and you can specify your rank or your skill level as well as whether you're on Discord. There's tons of options and it's completely free. So definitely check that out if that interests you. I put a link in the description below. Okay, let's get into my picks for the 10 most iconic goals in Rocket League history. Again, make sure to let me know if I miss any and also let me know if you'd maybe order the list differently. Number 10, The Scrub Kill of Fate. I've talked about this game in a few other videos. If you haven't seen it, go watch it now so that I don't spoil it for you. I've put links in the description below for all of these goals. Incredible fake jump by Diva. We talked about this earlier. No reason to fake jump. Oh! Oh! Oh, keep it going! The counter! The counter mind game! He goes under him! Oh, Even that was better. so sick! He can take it Oh my, my goodness! Five seconds <laughs> left. You see the chat. Beanbo comes in. Five seconds remaining, and he goes under. He goes under Devo. Hey, that's what she said. The main difference between high and low level players is control, whether it's ball control, car control, and honestly just self control. And this goal is really a picture of that. Scrub knew he had one shot to score and he had ball possession. It takes an insane amount of control to pull off a fake like this in a high pressure situation. And when you put yourself in Devo's shoes, it makes sense to go for a shot like this the way that he did. You expect, tr you expect Scrub to go for a flick or probably a power shot here. He has the possession, and if you give him space, he's just gonna score it on you. So Scrub just baits him in and then watches him go flying over his head. I love watching this from Devo's perspective. If you've ever done this, then you can probably just feel this. Number nine, the Marky Duda 360 dribble. It's important to remember that this happened like a year and a half ago. Players really weren't trying these kinds of shots, especially not in the competitive environment. This was the first time I'd seen anything like this, and it was more than just a flashy goal. Obviously, Marky could have just hit the ball straight into the goal, but he actually does manage to subvert Kronovi's challenge on the ball, which makes it even more impressive. Watch, how did he manage to get that so quickly? He's going for the power side draw. Oh my goodness, Marky, Duda! What did we just see? He could have just ran this into the net, but no, he goes round the ball and <laughs> pops it back across. Holy cow. Number 8, the Cooksear double touch. This is still one of the most clutch goals in RLCS history. Cooksear had just forced overtime with this insane last second goal, and the game ended with Cooksear receiving a high pass from Markey and turning it into a backboard shot. This was a classic flip side lower bracket game, and it was really a picture of their ability to pull through and make things happen when they were down. Number 7, the Kyle Mask last second shot. When I made my video on the greatest Rocket League games of all time, LeafX reminded me of this goal, and he described it as the shot heard around the world. These were different times, back in the day when high level Rocket League players were excited to try out the DLC cars. After this goal, my sources tell me that the Takumi sales absolutely skyrocketed. No, I'm just kidding. Number 6, the Kronovi Air Dribble. You know that feeling when you're just playing so good and everything is just coming to you naturally, and you actually kind of feel like you're screwing around a little bit. Like you're not actually focusing, you're trying crazy stuff, and just doing things that you wouldn't normally do. In many ways, that's what I felt was happening when I watched IBP towards the end of Season 1, and even at the World Championship. I know that at this level, this goal probably wouldn't even be possible now. I think this is iconic for me because it was somewhat symbolic, Kronovi just sort of taking the ball and carrying it over everyone else. It's also a picture of how the Rocket League meta has changed. Team play is just so much more important now than individual flashiness. Number 5, the Allot Ceiling Shot. I would argue that this is probably the best goal in RLCS history. Again, I think there's a difference between iconic, great, and best, 
Regardless, I think this goal really solidified the shift that had already taken place in Rocket League esports. Method and PSG, two teams that nobody picked to be on top, were absolutely dominating in Season 4, while the great European giants like Flipside and Envy failed to even make it to the LAN. Players like Alot had always been around, but it wasn't really until this season that they were able to break through and really show the community how good they were. Number 4, the Farah mind game. Again, this is similar to number 5, there was just something about watching this player, Farah, who I actually thought was a girl for most of the season. I don't know why, I just couldn't stop thinking of this player as a girl. Anyways, there was just something about this formerly unknown player just completely mind gaming world champions, like it was nothing. In season 4, it was obvious the Rocket League giants in Europe were no longer on top. Here in season 3, the seeds were really there. And I think that people felt that, especially in these moments, and that was really what made these kinds of things so exciting, was just seeing underdog teams like the Leftovers take down teams like Flipside. Number 3, the Crown and Jewels game winner. Here, there's actually two goals, the insane pass play with two seconds left to force overtime, and then obviously this outlandish game winner. Oh One goal will decide it oh. all. Crown and Jewels back tonight! Oh. Oh. Back to the goal! Oh. And oh. that! Crown and Jewels are the season <laughs> one Rocket League Central Pro League champion! Unbelievable! This was really one of the first big esports moments for Rocket League, and it was really just incredible to see this team come back and stick with Flipside and be able to beat them in the end. Number 2, the ceiling shot fake. Much has already been said about this goal, and you all know it was going to be on this list. As much as people have said that this isn't that amazing of a goal, people do ceiling shots like this all the time, I want you to think about this for a second. You're playing live in front of hundreds of fans, and thousands of people are watching you online. Are you really going to choose to hit a shot like this? And that's really what stands out for me. This is Squishy's first appearance at the live finals, against one of the best teams in the world. This wasn't against some random, like, OCE team. Anyways, what really makes this goal so iconic is not the fact that it was a ceiling shot, but that it was a ceiling shot most of us had never seen. And I know I'm gonna have people in the comments making fun of me for this, but honestly, I'd never seen someone do this exact shot. It was just so epic when it happened. You have to at least admit that. Alright guys, you probably guessed it, my pick for the most iconic goal in Rocket League history goes to this air dribble from over zero at the Season 1 LAN. If you're a newer player, you may not know what I'm talking about or understand why this would be my number one pick. If you are a newer player, I would say just go watch this whole series, and honestly just watch the whole tournament. There's three main reasons why this is the most iconic goal in Rocket League history. First, IBP was the clear underdog coming into the live finals, and they had to face number one ranked Flipside Tactics. They had just won the regional championship to make it, and they had to go up against the best team in Europe. Number two, Over Zero was IBP's sub for the tournament, and like, nobody had even heard of him at this point. And number three, the coolest thing anyone could do in Rocket League at this point was air dribble. All of these things came together for this match-winning goal to knock the best team in the world down to the lower bracket. This actually is true. Batmobile sales went up like crazy after this goal. Think about this. Gambit was IBP's star, and he couldn't play in the live finals. His sub was Over Zero, the LAN MVP. Gambit was a breakout user, Over Zero was a Batmobile man. The three most popular cars before this tournament were by far the Octane, Dominus, and Breakout. After this tournament, the three main cars were the Octane, Dominus, and the Batmobile, and nobody really used the Breakout anymore. So yeah, think about that. Alright guys, those are my picks for the 10 most iconic goals in Rocket League history. Be sure to like this video if you liked it, and also subscribe for more stuff like this. Also, don't forget to check out GamerLink, that's the free app that I mentioned earlier that helps gamers find other gamers. Until next time, peace out.